Hello, everyone, and blessings in Jesus' name. Um, we're back just to give like a word of edification, you know, basically, and my wife is also going to share a testimony. This is basically about the importance of fellowshipping with other believers, how much of a blessing it can be. First things first, you know, definitely, you know, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like, share this video with others as well. And we thank you for your support, those who have been supporting this ministry uh, and this channel as well. But as we was mentioning, this is basically just a, you know, edification to encourage people and let them know the importance of fellowship with other believers. You know, it's, it's the devil wants to isolate people where, where they don't fellowship with another believer. All right. Now I'm not talking about when God isolates you and puts you in like a wilderness season because of purging and, and, and training and he's grooming you before he sends you out. I'm not talking about that. That's completely different. I even went through that, that type of wilderness se um, season. I believe my wife, she had went through that as well, but I'm talking about, at times where the enemy begins to isolate us and causes us not to want to fellowship mm -hmm. with other believers. All right. For some, whatever reason you may develop a mindset as if you're a, um, a, I usually call them like a rogue, mm -hmm. <laughs> a rogue soldier. There's no rogue in the body of Christ. All right. Even Jesus, when he was on this earth, he walked with the disciples. Right. And when he sent them out, he sent them out two by two. All right. So, just have, just remember that there is no rogue solo warrior in, in, in the body of Christ. That's why it's called a body of Christ, because we're a body. If you look at your body, you have different members. That's what the scripture is telling us, you know. We are the body of Christ, and we're we're different members of that body. So we we basically benefit each other. All right. When you fellowship with each other, you know, people, God will use people to speak to you. All right. You may be praying for something throughout the week. Seeking God for answers on something, some situation, some circumstances you want to answer for. And you end up going to the congregation, to the church, and the pastor is speaking on something, preaching on something, and it boom, it hits you. Or somebody begins to prophesy when the Spirit of God is upon them, and they begin to speak something that's tailored to your situation. God is speaking, all right? Yes. And that begins to edify you, encourage you, knowing that God hears you. At times, you may need an encouraging word. At times, you may be going through some rough times. All right, some rough hardships and somebody God may use to come along and encourage you, build you up or maybe like help you out in some one way fashion, whether it's food, clothes, mm -hmm. money, you know, help pay your bills, whatever it may be. You know, I'm not talking about hypocrisy because I know people have experienced church hurt. All right. Mm -hmm. Betrayals in churches and things in that nature. And be the devil will use that. And you just cancel out every mm -hmm. single everybody. Mm -hmm. That's the trap you don't want to mm -hmm. fall for. All right. Jesus said in Matthew 24, in these end times that lawlessness shall abound and the, the hearts of many, the love of many shall grow cold. All right. You don't want your heart to grow cold. All right. Because when your heart grows cold, that's when you begin to fall away from the faith. All right. Hebrews 12 tells us, right. Sorry. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching, all right? Exhortating, exhorting each other when we're, when, we're, when we're coming together as the day is approaching, the day of the Lord, all right? The Lord is gonna come. We don't know when, but we it's good to exhort people, exhort other believers because at times we become worried in our mind, all right? At times people may have that thought, you know, something, I just feel like just, just dropping this whole thing, giving up. Just turn it back. Just forget this yeah. whole thing. You know, these thoughts come. They come to my mind, too. But that is why we have each other. Somebody's going to bring that courage word to keep you going. Hey, don't give up. Keep going. All right. Someone's going to going to going to going to give their testimony of something they may have been through that you're going through now. Mm -hmm. And by you hearing that, that will encourage you to keep going because they kept going and, and look where they are now. All right. And not only this, when you get through your test, you will become a testimony. You will be used to help other people who may be going through the thing that you went through. But if you're an island all by yourself, all right, who, who, who's speaking to you? That's true. It's, it's, that's, that's not God's will, mm -hmm. you know. As I mentioned, like, there's people who have experienced church hurt, and the devil will use that and put a seed inside their minds. So they just cancel out every single believer, all right? That's a trap. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you need me to share my testimony? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so I wanted to share this testimony. I agree with everything my husband is saying. Everything he's saying is on point. It's very important that we um, fellowship because, um, you know, we have to edify one another and exhort one another. As my husband said, you don't know what a person may be going through or yourself personally. You may be going through something and somebody may have a word to edify you. So um, one day, uh, was, I think it was last week, mm -hmm. Monday last week when I woke up in the morning, I prayed to the Lord. I usually pray this prayer because, you know, a lot of times we come to God and we always, you know, Lord, you know, do this for me, do that for me, do this for me. Okay, fine. We all have needs. God will provide that. We understand that. Um, but, you know, the Bible says, I can't think of the scripture right now, but um, don't be about just your own interest, but be about the interest of others. I think it's in Ephesians. I'm not sure. Yeah, interesting. But um, anyway, so I have prayed, you know, Lord. Give me an edifying word to encourage someone or whatever. So he a answered that prayer. And I, I didn't even realize it when it was happening at the time. So anyway, um, I was at work and it's a young lady. She does like the transport, the medical transport. And um, we begin to talk or whatever. And, you know, she's a she was a believer and stuff like that. And um, she was telling me about her testimony. She was telling me basically that in December she was in she was in a head-on collision where somebody um ran into her. She was driving the um medical transport van and a sports car hit her head on or whatever. And she was saying that um it just can't happen so unexpected. And she thanked God that she lived or whatever. I don't know where her um walk was at that time, but she during the conversation she was saying something like it bore her closer to God. So maybe that was a wake up call for her to get serious with God or whatever. And it was just like so awesome. She was saying also that she doesn't listen to secular music. I mean, it was just so edifying talking to her. And um, as she shared her testimony, you know, the Lord began to work in my spirit to encourage her. I said, well, you went through that because she was um, on the phone with actually when I was um, sitting there with her or whatever. She was on the phone with I think the lawyer or whatever. They going over things about her Um her case or settlement or whatever. And also she may need surgery on her spine because she did get hurt. So um, she was saying like, um, basically, you know, she had all these um, finance, these financial issues and stuff like that. She's the head of household. So the Lord put in my spirit to encourage her. I said, well, basically you went through that to not only, you know, wake you up, but to encourage others that, you know, they have to really take their walk serious with the Lord. Cause we never know when our last day will be. Just like I told her, um, you know, just how that accident happened so quickly, like you wasn't expecting it. I said, you went through that for um, someone else, not only yourself. And I said, that's part of your testimony. And I said, yes, whatever was meant for, for your evil actually had worked out for your good because, you know, she had a financial situation because she was head of household. But of course, she may get a settlement if she take, you know, legal action because it was the guy's fault. He ran into her or whatever. And then actually, too, I, I forgot one part. When she got to the hospital, he looked at her nonchalantly and said, um, um, she told me, he said something like, you'll be OK, you know, just nonchalantly. And she was like, the devil's a liar. I know the devil ain't trying to take me out because it was just like he was so <laughs> nonchalant about it. Like, basically, you know, you'll be all right. It's not that big of a deal. Like, come on, a head on collision. They both could have died. But um, she, I was just encouraging her. And she was like, man, I'm getting goosebumps right now. This is just so awesome. This is just so encouraging or whatever. And, you know, as she was, you know, telling me more stuff and more about herself, it was edifying me. I really felt encouraged and I really felt uplifted myself as I was encouraging her and stuff like that. And I said, you, you're here for a purpose and a reason. You still are here. I said, it wasn't your time to go. And I said, now that, you know, you went through that Use this time to really take your, your walk serious and, you know, use that as your testimony and encourage other people that no day is promised. And, you know, she just really, really received that word. Then when I got to the physical therapy um, building or whatever, the receptionist, you know, she had gave me a compliment. You know, she kept looking at me and she she was staring at me because I never saw her before. I think she was new and she gave me a nice compliment. And then she um, asked me a question or whatever. And then she just started talking about Jesus. I'm like, wow. I mean, the day was just so awesome. It was like meeting these believers and people that are really on fire. You can tell there's like no front and they just really, really on fire for God and really love Jesus because the receptionist said, um, I get up every morning and I thank the Lord. I thank, you know, Jesus. And it's just so awesome. And she's sitting there and there's people, in the, you know, standing. And she didn't care. But it was so encouraging and awesome. I gave her a high five. You know, that day was a blessing. It was like God, you know, smiled on me or whatever. Like having me meet these believers and them just sharing a testimony, opening their heart. And it was edifying me. And then when I shared it with my husband, I realized 
that you know God answered that prayer. Yes. I didn't realize it until I started telling my husband about it. But that that young lady's um testimony with accident was just so awesome and edifying, you know, that she really going to you, you know, the enemy tried to take her out. But as I was telling her too, you know, devil doesn't have control of us like that. You know, when it's not if it's not your time, it's not your time, you don't have that power. If the enemy used that guy to try to, you know, take somebody out, it was God is still in control. God has all the power of our lives. So it was just awesome. It was just so awesome to to edify her and she shared that testimony and she's really really serious about god now amen mm -hmm. timely word you know Jesus. yes see that's why it's, it's important mm -hmm. you know to um you know have other believers around your life you know people you fellowship with not good to isolate yourself mm -hmm. you know whatever and so, I wanted to share too, yeah, as I prayed that, you know, who knows, she could have got up that morning and prayed, Lord, I need encouragement. You know, <laughs> going through an accident, we don't know what, we can't assume that, you know, everything, you know, she probably has pain in her back, which I believe she does. She said she um, having issues in her spine, but I don't, you know, I don't know what she prayed that morning. So I could have mm -hmm. been the um, answer to her prayer as exactly. well. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. You know, we want to ensure we're a blessing to other people. You know, God, God wants to use us, but are we making ourselves available? Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, I, I pray like, you know, you take this to heart, you know, that, you know, understand the importance of fellowship with other believers. And um, so what, what I'm saying, what I'm not saying is, you know, okay, should I just go to any church? No, because we know that, you know, in these times, mm -hmm. there's a lot of false going things. to churches. You want to be planted in a place where you're going to grow. So you always pray and ask God, you know, lead me to the right congregation, to that right church where you can be planted and you can grow. You can fellowship with other people because there's a lot of false churches out there, false prophets. People want to uh, extort you with your money, you know, whatever. All right. You already know that's going on. So it's good to seek the Lord and ask him, where can you be planted? Where you can be, where you can grow and be edified. So I pray you take this to heart. You know, I pray that it had blessed you as well, especially my wife's testimony. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, don't be afraid of fellowship. Don't be afraid to fellowship other believers. Don't isolate yourself. Seek God. Um, Pray to him. That way you grow in Christ and just continue to press forward. And I just want to share um, one scripture, but you can jot these scriptures down. I have other scriptures. Ephesians 4, 16. It says, God's people should strengthen each other spiritually and build up one another in the faith. Amen. Yeah. So um, also take note of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 11 to 18. Romans chapter 14. Um, it doesn't say the verse. Okay. Ephesians chapter four, verse 12, Ephesians 4, 16, which I just read in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 to 25. Amen. Jot them scriptures yeah. down. I, you know. Scriptures about edifying um, other believers. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right. So I pray this message, you know, this exhortation bless you. Pray to um, encourage you. Definitely like share this with others as well you know especially you know if you know anybody that's just they don't want to fellowship with believers because of past church or whatever it is share this with them and encourage them as well you know and you can even listen wherever you want to fellowship it doesn't have to be restricted to a church building right just understand this to be in your home like-minded you know, people like-minded people you know? and i want to share i want to um add to that too mm -hmm. i you know I've, I've been through things in church you know but we can't have the mindset like my husband said to isolate ourselves and take on a mindset that everybody's bad, everybody's toxic, everybody's false, mm -hmm. everybody's negative, you know, everybody's a betrayer, whatever. That's the trap of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Talking to the, that sister and those sisters, whatever, um, the ones I told you about, they were really, really on fire for God, you know, and that's what I felt in my spirit. And there's a lot of people like that. It's just, you have to pray to, to God to connect you to the right people, yes. the right connections. There's people out there that are true, that are not fake, that are not phony, that are not greedy and stuff like that. All the stuff we see in church is good pastors out there, is good leaders out there. And I know it's like a needle in a haystack nowadays we're in the last hour, mm -hmm. but it, it is people out there that are really serious about their walk with Christ. Sure. So just pray. If you're in an isolation period right now where God has you isolated because you've been through something and you're waiting for the right people to come into your life because you're tired of being hurt, whether it's church family, um, you know, your, your natural family, whatever, God will connect you. He understands he will connect you to the right people. We're not saying go out here and just try to, you know, um, be around everybody. Yeah. Or whatever. You don't need to take certain things inside your spirit, yeah. but just pray to God, like, Lord, connect me with some divine connections, with some kingdom minded people. And he will do it. You That's may right. have to wait. 
or whatever, but God will do it. He will He will make those connections for you. But yeah. don't isolate yourself. That's the trap of the enemy. Enemy start working on your mind and mm -hmm. having you bitter and having you thinking that everybody is, you know, bad and you know, you have a suspicious negative mindset. No. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. Yeah. Amen. Yes. So we pray this blessed you. Like and share this video. Yeah. And may the grace of the Lord be with us, his saints, forevermore. Amen. Yes, amen. All right.